Plywood tear out can be devastating to a project. The best way to prevent it is to use a zero clearance throat insert and a good 80 tooth blade that's properly designed for making fine cross cuts. With this, I never get tear out. Let's face the facts. Nobody likes changing blades. And so if you only have one or two plywood cuts to make, you're likely to attempt it with the 40 or 50 tooth combination blade you've already got in your saw, which is more likely to cause tear out. So here's one way to get a cleaner edge in veneered plywood with a combination blade. Consider making a scoring cut. This means raising the blade about a sixteenth of an inch or less above the top of the saw and cutting just the outer fibers of your workpiece. This way the teeth strike those fibers at a very steep angle, pushing them sideways instead of pulling the fibers downward. And since most of the teeth of a combination blade are pointed and only those pointed tips contact the wood, the effect is similar to scoring the surface with a utility knife. You're severing the delicate outer fibers before the full through cut can tear them out. You may even score both sides of the plywood before raising the blade to cut all the way through, and that way you get a nice crisp cut on both sides. That's the proper way to make a scoring cut. But there's another way that I see some folks doing, and I don't recommend it. It involves cutting in a backwards motion, pulling the workpiece across the blade instead of pushing it as you normally would. They reason that this merely mimics a feature found on some high-end industrial table saws, which have small scoring blades that run in the opposite direction of the main cutting blade. A blade cutting in this direction contacts the wood fibers in an upward motion rather than pulling them downward as the teeth cut. And there's no doubt that it produces a nice tear out free edge, but it also produces what's called a climb cut, which can pull the workpiece in the direction of the spinning blade. On a properly designed industrial saw, that scoring blade is placed right in front of the regular blade. So that light pulling motion of the scoring blade is immediately counteracted by the greater force of the large blade spinning towards you. So there's really no pulling motion that would exert force over your workpiece. But a backwards cut on a regular table saw pulling towards you provides nothing to counteract the pulling force of that blade, leaving you at the mercy of the blade itself. Even if that cut is very shallow and the pulling force is pretty light, it's never a good idea to give the saw that kind of control. Some say it's fine as long as you secure it to a sled. And that's partly true. A sled will make it easier to hold the workpiece. And when you combine that with a very shallow cut of a sixteenth or less, it seems unlikely that you're going to lose your grip. But there's still one big problem. To make a backwards scoring cut, you have to remove your splitter or your riving knife. And if you didn't want to bother changing to a proper cross cut blade in the first place, you're just as unlikely to reinstall that riving knife immediately after your scoring cut. So it's not going to be there when you make your next cut, which may put you in a kickback situation. In my opinion, there are better ways to prevent plywood tear out, including a scoring cut in a pushing motion, which you can leave your riving knife in for, or one of the other methods for avoiding tear out that we discussed in our recent Table Saw 101 series, which I'll link to in the notes below this video. Just click on show more if you're on YouTube. Ridge Carbide is the best cut secret in woodworking. I kid you not, their saw blades are second to none, both in quality and performance, and they're less expensive than the other ultra premium brands. Do yourself a favor, use the link and the discount code below this video. You will never go back to cheap blades again. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.